people. It's David Ducker coming back at you. And today we're going to be talking about economy, the economy of your culture, of your of your world. Uh, how developed is it? What is it based upon? Uh, so again, this can be tremendously broad, huge. It can take over a campaign or it can be very, very, very minimal depending on the setting. But it is something you should consider for every setting. So let's run through the gamut. Uh, the economy, you know, the base level, the primary uh, sector of that economy is going to be food. Uh, that, that's, that should really have its own category. The primary sector also is going to include uh, mining as well. So, and some economies never move much beyond this. Hunter-gatherers, their economy is just about food and basic mining, uh, which might just be gathering firewood, maybe cutting down trees, uh, finding some rocks that they can flint nap into stone tools, finding surface deposits of copper that they can beat into a copper dagger. Um, so, you know, it can be very, very basic, right up to, you know, actually logging. You have logging camps, you go out there, you chop down the trees. Um, fishing, where you have reels, where you have nets, where you have boats. Um, this could be aquaculture. Maybe you're um, growing fish or farming fish. And there's a lot of high-tech uh, solutions to that right now in the world. Uh, but it could be as simple as growing seaweed. Some Polynesian cultures, um, you know, they, they cultivated seaweed the way uh, a lot of other cultures uh, grew food on the land. And then, of course, uh, you know, it can be mining, whether that's surface deposits, shafts uh, that they dig down, um, you know, shafts that need pumps to get because they're below the water table to get water out, to get clean air down in. Uh, the first recorded case of the bends, which is like bubbles, carbon dioxide uh, and nitrogen bubbles in your blood, uh, was not from going deep underwater. Uh, pressure sickness uh, is what the bends is, is called in the medical community, but it, it was actually first reported because they pressurized an entire mine to make sure clean air was getting down inside. And when the people were coming out of the mine, because the pressure was different, it was giving them those bubbles in, inside of their body, uh, which is really bad for you, <laughs> and, and, like really bad, especially depending on the pressure difference. But uh, so so mining is one of them. And as far as food, you know, I talked about uh, fishing, but there can be hunting and farming as well. Uh, if farming can be uh, and herding, ranching and farming can have levels of complexity uh, as well, whether they're doing crop rotation, uh, whether they're doing fallow field agriculture, slash and burn agriculture. Uh, so there's a whole lot that, that can go into even just the primary sector uh, of your economy or not. Like I said, you could be a hunter-gatherer group doing Neolithic times, hunting mammoths um, and, and fishing or, or move up into like a medieval era. And you've got some lumber camps, some mining, but, but, but no deep shaft mining. Um, and you've got uh, lumber camps developed. Uh, and then you could even move forward into the future and do like space opera, you know, and, and uh, have these really sophisticated mines, zero G asteroid mines um, and, and, and other, you know, robots send, send the robot out and they will gather, um, you know, this enormous uh, robot with saws all over cutting trees down and packing them up. Uh, and it, it, it's just left on its own. It'll strip the whole forest or maybe just strip, uh, what should be stripped from the forest, certain old growth trees leaving much of the rest of the foliage undamaged and undisturbed. So that, that's primary uh, economy. And then we have secondary. This is taking those raw materials and making them into something useful, into a product. Um, so primary would be the lumberjack. He gets the wood. Secondary would be a charcoal burner. He burns the wood into charcoal, then he sells the charcoal. So he's transforming one thing into another thing. That's secondary. Uh, same thing with uh, sculpting, with uh, with cooking, with processing food, whether that's drying, smoking, pickling, uh, any kind of preservation technique you want to use on the food. Um, 
that and of course this is all your heavy industry as well factories building cars spaceships robots uh, you know you, you could even consider it pumping out clones maybe that can be secondary uh, economy uh, you know it, it probably isn't but in most settings but it could be in your setting um, so the secondary economy so this is a more advanced society hunter-gatherers kind of had this they, they, you know the author guy uh, he finds the stone and he flint naps it into a stone axe when he flint naps it, that's technically secondary uh, industry but again how widespread is industry in your culture in the hunter-gatherer culture there's very little industry um, whereas in something like space opera you know massive uh, factories manufactoriums uh, you can have you know j just a tremendous uh, uh, wealth of this and this can really drive the the economy of your world and it can be really really important uh, or not again depending on your setting I just want you to think about it for your setting so uh, you can think about the power groups so your players can ask you questions and you can answer them intelligently um, because they may have secondary effects on your game as well um, and then the, fi the final layer is the tertiary industries so these don't really deal with products uh, physical things these are uh, services so your doctors your lawyers your teachers uh, entertainers a anyone who, who does not deal with like physical commodities accountants uh, bookkeepers scribes all of that they're all tertiary uh, priests you could consider priests uh, you know if that's a big part of your economy uh, or even the government you know maybe in uh, in Soviet Russia uh, the the economy is, is is the government that the government is the economy is good yeah comrade uh, you know that can be excellent very fun but just think about you know if there's government corruption what does that do to the economy what does that do to the people or if the government's great, you know, Star Trek, maybe they, you know, the government's great, they run the economy, and they're so great, everybody's happy and smiling, we don't have to work anymore. Um, so this is somebody to think about, and it always comes back to storylines, you know, that to uh, characters. Characters drive storylines. Storylines are, are like what you want out of the game. It's a storytelling game, right? So... Uh, this can be anything from the craftsman in the village, you know, the guy who makes shoes, the blacksmith who makes a, a hauberk of mail for your character. That's all an economical concern. How much does it cost? How much work goes into it? How uh, difficult is it to acquire? Um, you know, all of these different factors. These are all economical concerns. And uh, you should always devote this this section of your world building to economics. You know, how easy is it to get a sword? How much does a sword cost? How hard is a sword to make? How rare is a sword in the setting? Does a sword have any uh, prestige? Or does everybody have swords and they're really easy to get? Um, and again, not just a medieval model, but a space opera, you know, force field belt. How easy is that to get? A, a gene mod retrovirus you want to turn your skin blue how easy is that to, to get to manufacture to make is there a monopoly is there a guild uh, our previous campaign legends of the seven sands most of the action was just dealing with the guilds there was a guild for everything you know we had two transportation guilds we had uh, guilds for all the different materials so carpentry guild a uh, metalworking guild, a gem cutting guild, uh, a leatherworking guild, a bone guild, because in this setting, uh, bone was a very important building material. You know, they were killing giant sandworms and taking their, their bones. You know, imagine a snake skeleton, but uh, tremendously huge, massive. So with all this bone laying around, there was a whole guild dedicated to uh, crafting with that bone. And they were a power player. You know they were they were scheming, conniving against the other guilds, all jockeying for position and power, and and that was what drove all of our storylines. You know the Bone Guild wants to get an edge on the Stonecutters Guild, the uh, the Skyship Guild wants to get an edge on the on the regular shipping guild with the water vessels, and you know we're getting caught up in that. Cyberpunk 
uh, is a great example because you have mega corporations which are like guilds in many ways. Uh, you know, they might have monopolies. They certainly have trade secrets. And you get espionage and you get jockeying and politicking and all these characters involved. Some of them useful craftsmen, some of them less useful. You know, they run the business, but they might not actually have any skills of their own to build whatever their guild controls. Uh, in a medieval setting, they probably do. In a cyberpunk setting, they probably don't. Uh, so I just wanted to make this video as part of my cultural world building video series so you can think about uh, the economics of your world. How much does an arrow cost? How much value does a gold coin have? Um, you know, how, how expensive is it to buy a robot? A new robot, an old robot, a human replica droid, uh, a replicant, the Nexus 6, whatever it is. Uh, you should know how much it costs, uh, who makes it, what the power of that group is, uh, whether it's very powerful like a megacorp, uh, East India Company in a pirate game could be tremendously powerful. Or if, if it's just a lot of individual craftsmen wandering around and they're not really unified by a guild, that'll have a huge effect on your stories and your setting and its history and how you perceive the world. Uh, so just think about it ahead of time, and your world will be much richer for it. Uh, so that's about all I have to say about the economy of your world. If I missed anything, the comments below. Tell me what I missed. Uh, tell me what you've done with economics in your game world. And until I see you again, good day and good gaming.